Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You are in the right place if you're an agent, you're a team leader, you're a broker owner, and you're looking to strengthen your luxury division, or you're looking to break into or dominate selling high-end and luxury properties for your given market. Again, our podcast is part of the industry syndicate, uh, where other top podcasts are as well, so check that out. Again, Michael Lafito, I'm really excited about today's guest, but before I introduce Tiffany, I do want to remind you, if you have any questions on anything we cover today or perhaps in previous episodes, please shoot us an email. Shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And if you are getting something from these podcasts, a nugget here or there, please leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. I recently was down in Miami doing a training at the um, Miami Congress, the 25th annual event, which I highly recommend. Uh, Next year that is the 26th conference. It's in November. So if you're looking to make global connections, I recommend the Miami (laughs) Congress event. But I had a gal come up to me and said, I listened to your podcast straight. I drove from North Carolina to visit my boyfriend in California, and I Love your podcast, and it was it really made my day. So, again, we could use reviews and feedback, so please, uh, please do so. That would be awesome. All right, let's get right into our show. And as always, if there's a topic you want us to cover and we haven't, or perhaps you'd like to nominate somebody, please, Michael at MarketingLuxuryGroup.com, we're all ears to those suggestions. All right, my next guest um, her and I briefly met at the Luxury Connect event, which I recommend that event every October, <laughs> put on by Inman. It's out in Beverly Hills. And her and I both were round t- uh, roundtable discussion leaders. There were several of us. And uh, her topic w- really caught my eye, and uh, that's what she's going to be talking about today and perhaps some other things. But uh, Tiffany McQuaid from McQuaid and Company Real Estate Services, which is in Naples, Florida, Uh, Tiffany, uh, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. Tiffany, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. And um, you're obviously in Naples, but tell us a little bit about how many years you've been in real estate and you're you're the owner of your company. But give us a little background on you, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Well, I am an Ohio girl, um, born and bred, and... (laughs) transplanted to Naples full-time almost 18 years ago. And when I was up in Ohio, I had a, um, it did a lot of marketing promotion and special event management. I started with a big shopping center developer, um, creating events and things that would draw traffic into the shopping centers and ultimately into the tenant stores. Um, and then, you know, transitioned into nonprofit marketing, um, into big event planning and all sorts of things, everything from induction ceremonies to bridal shows to haunted attractions to anything you can imagine. And when we um, relocated full time down to Naples, I decided that it was an opportunity to take what I know and what like runs through my veins, which is marketing. It's kind of a a special gift that I have. Um, with what I love and what I'm passionate about, which is real estate. You know, it's always kind of been a passion of mine. So I took the opportunity to get licensed and start as an agent. Um, ultimately, well, seven, almost 18 years ago, ultimately with the goal of having um, my own brokerage, which I kind of knew year one that that's what I was going to do. So, um, so I, you know, started in the trenches, just like all of the, you know, great real estate industry people, you start from square one. And in the back of my mind, everything that I was doing and trying, um, I was doing with the intent to be able to convey it down the road 
um, to realtors and help streamline uh, their processes and growth in their businesses going forward um, and help, you know, not have to worry about the marketing component, but go out and do what they do so well. And that's build relationships, make connections, and ultimately sell. That's great. That's great. So the Ohio, the Midwest, you know, uh, unfortunately, Ohio was in the news recently uh, because of the Cleveland Browns on the football field did something really, uh, you know, uncharacteristic. But oh, I love Ohio. It's a great state. Uh, and right. so when, how many years ago did you say you moved down to? Maple? Well, uh, almost 18 years ago now. Almost 18 so, years. Okay. Yeah, full time. And, you know, it was <laughs> definitely one of the top five best decisions I've ever made in my life. You know, Ohio is such an amazing state and it was a great place to grow up and be raised and, you know, fantastic place to be. But boy, there is something to be said for um, the sunshine down here and how you feel and being able to go to the beach. And, yeah. you know, it's just an entirely different life. And yes. Um, you feel better, you know, you really do. And you don't miss, you know, again, I love Ohio. I'm a, once a Buckeye, always a Buckeye, but mm -hmm. I don't miss the potholes in the road. I don't miss the gray days and the dirty cars. And more importantly, I don't miss the snow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I hear you. I mean, I'm looking out at my window <laughs> right now at snow. We had snow for Halloween for the first time I and I can remember. So uh, oh, I don't blame baby, it's you. Time for you to come to Naples. I, I might need to podcast, go south. I'm going to relocate you. <laughs> I might need. I might need to. I might need to. So, so you had a you led a roundtable discussion on what what yes. was called bi state partnerships. Um, you Correct. and uh, Dolly and 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 her daughter Jenny Lenz um, out of New York, mm -hmm. and and talk Correct. to me a little bit about how this came about and and some of the the bullet points if we will that uh, you guys talked about during your round table discussion topic at the luxury connect sure well you know i think um as an industry you know sometimes we get so focused on you know our our sphere you know the people that are in our community and you know in our immediate area or farm areas and what have you and, and that should be priority by all means. You need to know that like the back of your hand. But, you know, I think sometimes and especially, you know, Florida is kind of a natural, but, you know, some of the states up north currently are dealing with additional taxation on, um, you know, varying is weather issues, whatever it would be, varying issues that are causing people to, you know, be more mobile and think a little more about where they want to live for their future and, you know, where they want to spend some time. And, you know, I think no matter what market you're in, I mean, some obviously more transient than others, but, you know, I think there's always opportunity in every market to find additional um, sources of, you know, opportunity, relationship building, cross promotion. Um, you know, when we're seeing companies like Amazon, you know, build their brand on relationship, you know, branding and, you know, crossing over the partnerships and all of that, you know, I think it's a natural step for our industry and especially state to state. So, you know, I think especially in the luxury space, you know, these people are our customer base, you know, the people that we have cultivated relationships with, you know, that they know that they can trust you and that they can lean on you and all of that. And when the time comes to think about, you know, selling their home in another state and or relocating or whatever it would be, you know, it's always good to have that connection point to provide them someone that you equally know is going to take as great of care of them, you know, as opposed to them just Googling someone and finding, you know, a random person, maybe with no back history or no, you know, no prior relationship. Um, instead of having to reinvent the wheel, you know, know that they're going to be very well taken care of with someone that uh -huh. you know and trust, you uh -huh. know, and I think, as we, um, especially in the luxury space, um, become 
or probably need to become a little more a concierge, you know, in a way where we're mm-hmm. diversifying, you know, that not just real estate transaction based, but relationship based, you know, marketing in diversity and being able to help and support from a variety of avenues, you know, probably a la um, wealth management methodology, you know, how how the wealth management advisors and, and things, um, how they handle their customer base, you know, basically handling everything from, you know, travel assistance to, you know, real estate to relocation to investment strategy, you know, estate planning, whatever it would be. But being able to offer that diversity is so important. And it all starts with relationship, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is relationship based. So you establish this, um, this relationship, and let's talk about. And you, you, you briefly talked about it, but we talk about migration patterns. So as as a marketing agent in Naples, uh, you know, I'm based right. in Oak Brook, and you, you you need to know where from a transient and transferees. Where, where are people coming from? Is there some consistency, whether it be a state, a region? And so for those yeah. of you that are listening, you know, this is something that you need to do research on for your high end and luxury properties and, and, yes. and your, your entry yes. level and your average price properties as well. So it, yeah. naturally with Florida and warmer climate, you, you get, you get a lot of people moving from, from New York. So you mm-hmm. establish this, this bi-state relationship. And if Dolly was from North mm-hmm. Dakota and you didn't have any people moving from North Dakota to Florida in this example and to right. Naples, <laughs> You probably right. wouldn't have had that that relationship. So, talk to me a little bit about sure. the actual um, partnership. Is it is there any formality mm-hmm. like a formal, yeah. or is it just hey, you're touching base quarterly? Talk to me a little bit about this partnership, so to speak. Well, with this particular partnership, and you know, again, within the industry, and we are so blessed to have um, organizations like Inman or you know, NAR or, you know, what have you, that we can all collectively get together at various functions and meet, Um, you know, some you follow on social media and then put a face to a name in those types of events, you know, so you build um, relationships all over the country, you know, through that. And some you connect with more than others, you know, and in this particular case, um, with Dolly, you know, we met at an Inman function uh, about six years ago, you know, and just kind of cultivated a relationship over time. And then with that said, you know, New York was making a variety of different uh, tax decisions that uh-huh. caused people to seriously consider on um, a shelter space, you know, whether it's Texas or, or Florida. Uh, that they could make good financial and estate planning decisions. And especially in that uber luxury, high net worth, you know, um, on classification, you know, that's very impactful when you've got a mansion tax that just started, you know, July 1, that, you know, huge, 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 um, Uh uh, you know, uh, uh, amount that you have to pay when you close on a property. Um, you know, that, that wasn't anticipated. So, you know, it's, it's really strategizing and, and you just said it the best, you know, not every state, not every city um, is going to have opportunities for alliance um, in a, in a bi-state environment or multi-state environment. But like for us, you know, I can tell you in our area (laughs) where you're at, Uh, Oak Brook, we get a ton. Um, We get a ton Uh of Illinois. We get a ton of New York. We get a ton of New Jersey. Um, Ohio, of course, Pennsylvania, Michigan, tons of Michigan, tons of Wisconsin, um, Carolinas, you know. So these are the areas, New Jersey, you know, that we're really, really concentrated on in terms of um, seeing migration of people. You know, it's an easy flight for all those areas. To, to our uh, little sunshine state here. But as far as with Dolly, what we did was we created um, kind of a program that we called Apples to Oranges. And it was just kind of a fun way to make a connection and be able to um, get people to resonate with us being kind of your uh, New York to Florida transition team, you know, uh-huh. specializing in that exact 
methodology, you know, and kind of knowing everything that you would need to know about that transition um, from start to finish. So, you know, that, that was the thought process, you know, for that Uh, it's been, you know, really, really good. Um, And then as far as, you know, the other states, you know, whether it's us in Florida or, you know, you in Illinois, I'm sure you see, you know, people moving ingress and egress from Mm -hmm. varying areas. You have to do your homework, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's such an additional source of revenue, whether you're a brokerage owner looking to generate additional revenue into the brokerage or to be able to, from a brokerage perspective, feed on referrals, you know, to your team, (laughs) excuse me, which actually have a much better conversion rate than just a, a, an internet lead or a Zillow lead or something like that. You know, this is relationship based person to person. And, you know, we, I think we understand the value of that. I know you do, you know, I, as an industry, we see it, but sometimes we glaze over the opportunities that can be found outside of, of market and how important it is to hold on to that customer and be able to hand them to someone that you know and respect. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a, you hit the nail on the head. First off relationships. So building relationships, that's the beauty of going to the Inmans and, and the various events is, is you build relationships with, with other <laughs> Oh my goodness! Excuse me, I just sneezed myself. You build relationships <laughs> with with others outside of your your areas that you work, right? And you build, right? You know, again, it's just like anything else. It's who do you like? Who do you trust? Right? Who are going to take care of your right. clients? Just like if you recommend a painter to your buyer mm-hmm. or to your seller, and it, it, if it's a bad experience, it's going to be a direct reflection on you because you referred them. So. Same same right. concept. I mean, literally, I got a call today from someone from North Carolina that I have a good relationship with, and he's got a client looking to move this way. And and again, if you yeah. if you stay top of mind awareness and you have a yeah. servant heart and, and and you bring value to other agents' relationships, uh, then naturally you'll be top of mind awareness when they have a a referral in that given marketplace. Yeah. yeah. And and. Again, you hit the nail on the head. Top of mind awareness and recognition. That to me is the most important thing that that anybody needs to focus on. And how do you create top of mind awareness and recognition? I mean, obviously it, it is going the extra mm-hmm. mile. It's adding mm-hmm. value. It's leaving a mark, leaving an impression, you know, and, and a positive impression. One that I like to call, um, um, you know, it's not enough really to have a customer that's happy with you at closing. And I tell my team this all the time, you know, what you want to create are raving fans, you know, raving fans are going to talk about you to everyone that they know unsolicited, Mm -hmm. you know, a good experience Mm -hmm. in a dialogue that may come up about real estate, you know, Oh, well, we had a good experience with so-and-so or, you know, what have you. And that's all well and good, but, what you want are raving fans, you know, those are the uh, uh, sneezers, so to speak, you know, that are going to mm-hmm. talk unsolicited and really generate, you know, tell everyone that they know. And, you know, that's what, that's what you're looking for. Um, that's what you're looking for, right? Yeah, really is. Well, that, that's a good yeah. insight. So, you know, the, the, the key takeaway from this conversation thus far uh, to our listeners is, again, especially high end and luxury, it, it's a global industry right now. And so you really yes. have to build those relationships just, you know, with agents across the different parts of the U S but also parts of the world. Right. I mean, yeah. you, you just it, don't know where people are going to come. And don't be afraid to travel for them or with them to look at or preview properties or view properties um, with them in different markets, uh, you know, with agents, the realtors that are, you know, knowledgeable in that marketplace, you know, I think it's very good that, you know, that relationship continues on varying levels. And, you know, although if you're not licensed in a certain area, of course, you've got to mind your P's and Q's. But, you know, if, if 
they feel comfortable with you. You know, don't be afraid to do that. Go do the extra work, you know, fly wherever you need to go to meet who you're referring them to and spend some time with them previewing properties before the customer gets there. Because, you know, nobody, everybody is, strapped for time right now. You know, we're all immediate gratification. And boy, what a huge step that is for you if you can eliminate a lot of work for them um, and, you know, make sure that they're looking at what you know is going to fit their bill. Because if you've been spending time with them, you're going to know them, you know, better. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. That's one of the great things about our industry as well, Tiffany, right? As being a licensed agent, you can refer people anywhere in the world and get a referral agreement. How great is that? Right. Right. I mean, literally, right. NAR has got a global uh, referral agreement. I mean, so even if they're outside the U.S., uh, you know, this 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 can be done. So right, and probably kind of based on that, um, we created something in our office that's proprietary to us that we market a lot. You know, this time of year, you'll probably see it in your marketplace here <laughs> circulating pretty soon through social media and things, but it's a program that we call Snowbird Certified. And, you know, I kind of saw a need for something like this because, you know, as an industry, we've got all these great, great, great additional educational um, uh, designations that you can go get, whether it's for luxury or you know, certified Yeah, luxury listing specials. There you go. Thanks for this little plug. (laughs) Right, (laughs) right, right. But, you know, sometimes the consumer really doesn't know what all that means. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, can Mm -hmm. you agree? A lot of times it's education for the realtor and I'm all for further education. By all means, do everything, get everything you can. But the customers don't know what the ABR and the CRE, they don't know what any of that means. So what we did, you know, within our office is we saw a need because people don't really understand when they're coming to Florida, you know, number one, what you need to do to homestead, you know, for tax purposes, how you get your driver's license, you know, things that you really need to know, steps that you need to take, you know, things that we could help implement for them. So we kind of created our own designation called Snowbird Certified and trained our realtors. So kind of over and above additional or, you know, regular real estate education. Um, We've created our own additional curriculum um, that provides them with further information that, you know, they would need to be able to offer, you know, anyone from up north. Um, you know, a smooth, seamless transaction and help everything, you know, streamline. So, you know, with that said, the whole goal was that, you know, in a referral environment that, you know, a partner that we have or partners or whoever that we're working with up north, that they can feel comfortable sending their customers to us because we're Snowbird certified specializing in relocation from the north to the south. That's that's great. Again, specialization is huge, right? right? There, there's an old adage, generalists get paid, specialists get wealthy. The name of our book, the name of our, our, our certification is luxury listing specialist. It's not luxury listing generalist. <laughs> right, right. You know? Well, it's like a doctor, you know? You know, if you've got, if you have an ear issue, you're going to go to an ear, nose and throat specialist, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, what else is working out there today? Um, We were talking a little (laughs) offline and you were talking about some things that, uh, that you've, you're working on. You did some research on, you want, you want to share that with with the group? Sure. Sure. So, you know, and this is probably my own personal, um, you know, I'm so passionate about the industry and, you know, all I want to do is just better the industry and raise, raise the expectation. The bar. Raise yeah, the raise bar. the bar. And I think, you know, all of us do in our own way, I, or at least the majority, lots of, lots of us do, um, you know, but I see so much going on and it doesn't matter whether it's in our market. Now, I'm one of those crazy people that surf 
you know, the <clears throat> various portals, whether it's Zillow or Realtor.com or what have you, I surf them at night for fun and I just pick zip codes um, in <laughs> random parts of the country just to see like what's on the market and certain price sure. points and what they're, you know, how they're doing things and, you know, what have you. And it's just kind of a fun tidbit for me. But, you know, I'm always amazed at <clears throat> in a lot of areas and especially in the luxury space, you know, the lack of, and, and I don't want to generalize because certainly there's markets that, you know, definitely have a higher expectation for that marketplace. So, you know, internally, you know, within that market, I think they drive each other to be better um, brokerage to brokerage, but, you know, there are markets in a luxury space that, you know, I still see photos with an iPhone, you know, pictures mm -hmm. with trash cans, you know, toilet seats up, um, you know, things that should not be happening, you know, um, really in, in any space, doesn't matter the price range, but especially in luxury. And, you know, sadly, I still see things like that, you know, in our market. And, you know, for the last 17 years, you know, I've really been watching like a hawk, you know, our market and following all sorts of different aspects of it. But, you know, really what I've noticed is, you know, there's so many things that in the luxury space, especially, um, or if you, no matter the price range that you're specializing in as a realtor, these are ways to really elevate your game. And I'll just give you a few examples. You know, number one, brochures. Now, dear Lord, if you're <laughs> If you're in a luxury space, please, please, please do not just copy an MLS sheet, you know, and, and please don't Thank just you. copy an MLS sheet in black and white and lay that out for your open house or for your showing. You know, think about it from this perspective and really in any price range, you know, take the time to really go the extra mile or do something nice that represents the property well. You know, because when you think about it, if you've got a $10 million listing, and, and I'm seeing this in our market, so I'm speaking this from factual information here, but, you know, think about it, whether you're walking into an open house or you're walking in with another agent, you know, on a private showing, you walk in, the agent present either has these MLS sheets laying on the counter or they hand you one, for a $10 million property, what, what's happening in your mind as the customer? You know, your, your perception of value is lowering so much. Think about that. You know, you've got a $10 million property. You know, it would be like walking into a McDonald's, um, you know, the way that they're laid out and designed, although clean and, you know, nice. And walking up to the counter and them saying it's going to be $100 for a hamburger. You know, the perception of value doesn't equate, right? It doesn't compute. You walk into that type of location with those colors and the way that things are, expecting something speedy and reasonable and what have you, right? The two don't compute. It's the same thing in luxury real estate. If you walk in and the perception of value is lowered from the moment of impact, you know, of receiving that piece. You can't negotiate from a lower stance. You know, you want to elevate your game so that you're not leaving money on the table for your customer, right? Yeah. You know, you yeah. take time to do nice brochures that equate to the value of the property being promoted or represent it in such a way that, you know, makes it clearly, you know, a, a, a property of value, right? That you're you're negotiating from a from the you know perspective that you should be not from a lower perspective does that make sense you know then yeah, you're kind of uh, negotiating you're negotiating against yourself you know because hey if you don't care enough you know to really elevate it, why why is the buyer going to care enough to you know represent their offer or what have you you know accordingly right yeah, I, you know, you, so I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's it's part of what we call that Ritz Carlton experience, right? Why should they show your properties yeah. versus somebody else's? You want not just the buyer, but you want the agent to be excited. Oh, it's another one of Tiffany's listings. It's another one of Michael's listings because the experience is, is better. 
Um, mm-hmm. And the quality of materials and, and, and the professionalism. And, you know, just today I actually showed to a major CEO uh, a property, two and a half million dollars. And we had, uh, I talked to the buyer's agent ahead of time. And because and, we have both a beautiful wine room and humidor. And I just said, you know, does your, does your client, does he smoke cigars and, and do they like wine? And the answer was yes to both. We had two bottles of wine out, five amazing cigars and, and a little handwritten note and we, we gave them a gift we wanted them to walk away and and remember our experience and, and our remember more so than the competition yes and exactly that you are so right it goes back to what we talked about earlier top of mind awareness and recognition so what happens now that property goes to exactly that top of mind and even if it ends up not being the property that they decide to go with when they buy something else and it comes time for them to sell who are they going to think of they're going to think of you because of the experience that they had you know with that property and how you conveyed that property they're going to want the best right yeah Yeah. you know so even though you're not actively ever soliciting their business that's not what i'm encouraging What I'm talking about is always putting your best foot forward, you know, whether it's a la Disney, you know, I mean, you can't imagine a family saving for three years to finally take their kids to to Disney, you know, and showing up and all the parades canceled today, Mickey's sick, you know. Right. Um, Right. So just imagine that would never happen. Right. You know, oh, the costumes are filthy. You know, Mickey looks you know, doesn't look good. No, never happened. The experience is always going to be consistent. You know, you know that there's always going to be consistency and that that expectation is always going to be met. You know, that's what they specialize in. And that's really what we need to consider. You know, the other thing that I think realtors do that, um, again, it's another just a mental thing, but I don't think people realize how it depletes value is brochures and things laying down on a counter. You know, think about that. Every time someone lowers their stance or looks down, again, that's a depletion of value, <clears throat> you know, yeah. and if you elevate you know, it's kind of like retail 101. I mean, you can walk into Walmart at 4 a.m. when they're stocking shelves at the 24-hour ones, and it, it has always fascinated me. You go down the bag of chip aisle in Frito-Lay, everybody's there restocking that, you know, fresh. And they're pulling the corners of every bag, and everything is nice and organized. And that's Walmart. Why is that? You know, everything's upright. It's elevated. The corners of the bags pay attention next time you go. You know, you right. don't see crumbled bags. You know, it's it's about what's going to attract the eye and what's going to draw them to, you know, select that product or, you know, create a higher elevated stance. And it's the same thing with, with real estate. You know, elevate your brochures because yeah. then... You're elevating yourself, you're elevating your property, and you're elevating everything that you're doing in their mind to top of mind. Yeah, I mean, very well put, Tiffany. Um, you bring up a good point. So we had, and, and I don't have the show episode number in front of me, but you guys can look up David Banks' podcast. David Banks is out of Portland, Maine. I had David on a year and a half ago, perhaps. And one of the unique value propositions for David, he's a $160 million producer out of Portland, Maine with Remax, is he puts together... An, and, and I do this too, by the way, on my listing, but, but David has these hardcover uh, books on uh, uh, his listings. And literally, does he say it helps get the home sold? He goes, not necessarily, but it definitely helps with the experience. But guess what it does do as well, Tiffany? It helps them get Top the your listing, <laughs> right? right? It helps them get right. other listings and people talk about it. And it's a differentiator, um, but it does lead... If, Today, I had this yeah. relocation CEO looking at this home, and, and they had seven properties they were seeing. And I guarantee you the experience at ours was so much better and different than the others. And, and top of mind awareness and, and all the things you talked about. So today was awesome topic. So again, to review some major bullet points that Tiffany talked about, the bi-state relationships or bi-country relationships, um, e- even so 
you know, build those relationships, agents out there. Uh, again, we are a global uh, marketplace now, and because of the fact that a referral can be outside of the state, as you know, you know, you really want to build relationships. It's about the clients. It's about making sure you're hinting them off to somebody that will take just as, if not better, care of them than than you will. And then the second thing Tiffany talked about was, of course, having some amazing collateral. Uh, for your high-end and luxury listings, don't just do the flimsy little brochures, but but make the you know, make the high-class materials. It's not only going to leave a better impression on the property, which helps your client focused, but it's also going to help you as well as an agent uh, differentiate yourself. Now, Tiffany, for anybody that might have a Naples referral, or they want to find out more information about you, or you know they got a referral and they want to send them to someone that's Snowbird certified, what's the best way for them <laughs> to get in touch with you? Well, they can always call me direct on my um, cell phone at 239-287-6308, or can always visit us online at Team. McQuaid, M-C-Q-U-A-I-D dot com. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you were a great guest. I really appreciate all the value you, you brought to our listeners. Thank you. Well, I'm you're so welcome. honored to have been on your podcast. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. And for the rest of you, please keep raising the bar in our industry. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Check out Industry Syndicate, which our show is part of uh, that, that platform. And then, again, if you have our book, Luxury Listing Specials, please leave us a review on, Mad, uh, on, on Amazon. Last but not least, we are just finishing up our website. Uh, we just released our brand new website and our brand new certification. Uh, it was gone from 14 modules to 16. Check it out, luxurylistingspecials.com, luxurylistingspecials.com. And thank you, everybody. Make it a great day and go make somebody's day and prove others wrong. My name is Michael Lafito. Until next time, take care. Take care.